Now before I try to overcome the problem of the fact that this bit is undersized, and anyway I'll get into that later, I want to talk about why I prefer to use a barrel trimmer rather than sanding down the end of the blank. Now I have sanded down the ends. Uh, I've tried it and it does work. However, I find that for me, and this is my own personal preference, I like this better because this particular cutter, like, or in other words, this one, is different from this one. Now, how is it different? This one is flat on the top. If you're going to use this, you may as well just sand. However, this one is slightly cone shaped. Now, it, I'm using this as an example. It's not cone shaped like that, of course, but it's just very, very slightly cone shaped. Now, that means that when I uh, grind it down and get to the brass tube, the brass tube will be just very slightly lower or recessed than the wood on the outside. So that the pen part, when you, when you put it in, the pen part is going to come up against the wood first uh, before it actually touches the brass tube. In other words, it's going to be a little tighter fit. And, and that's, why I, I'll partic that's why I like this particular style. Um, uh, this flat one I got from Lee Valley. It, it does a nice job. And these other three that are slightly cone shaped are from William Woodwright. Now, you can probably get them from other places too. Now that is just my own personal preference. Uh, other guys may like to do things differently. Uh, I, a guy, one of the viewers sent me a, a video that he had taken last night. And uh, what he did was uh, uh, he used a sort of a jig and unfortunately I can't remember the name of it right now. Maybe I'll do it in subtitles underneath. Anyway, it, and that did sort of work pretty good and it sort of, uh, it kept everything nice and straight and, and it uh, uh, he used these things here. However, I guess I'm old and set in my ways and I'm going to stick with this. This hollow chisel mortiser, it's one of those things that you think you're going to use a lot. And it's sort of a nifty little tool. And granted, when I first got it, I was finding excuses to use it. But you know, it's probably been a year since I've used it. Nice machine, but unless you actually need one, save your money. Now you guys out there that like to be the safety police, I know you mean well. However, don't send me comments saying that this was dangerous. And, and in a way it is if you can't do it right. Okay, I know that I'm using my left hand as the push stick and my right hand is being used as the feather board. But also notice my left hand is firmly locked up against the fence and my right hand is firmly pushing down on the table. If the work was to suddenly disappear for any reason, my fingers aren't going anywhere near the blade. They're just going to stay right there where they are. Now, that being said, this is the way I do it. If you can't do dangerous stuff safely, then don't do this. Now, I had been hoping that I could spread this enough that this three-quarter inch blank would fit in this three-quarter inch hole but I can see that this piece of mahogany is a little bit bigger. So I guess I'm going to have to split this the rest of the way and then sort of somehow tie the ends together. Anyway, I think you probably know what I'm trying to make here now. Now, as you can see, when it's necessary, I do use a push stick. Now, I actually do do some things safely. And I made this because, well, a person would think, well, let's just hang on to it with your hand. You know, he could probably hold it. But what if it breaks apart while well, you're clamping down really hard and these uh, sharp edges start cutting into you instantly. So that's why I made this.
I'm just going to have to be careful not to hold it too tight. Yeah. Just has to keep it from turning. I think this is going to work. If I'm very careful and move it in very slowly into the larger diameter. I'm assuming, and of course, you know, never assume, but I'm assuming that it's going to progressively get larger up until it is within three one thousandths of an inch of being the right size. And that should be enough. I think that the brass tube, if this thing doesn't blow apart, will actually slide in and out nicely. I'm going to know in a minute. Now you're going to notice this doesn't want to go on this way, but it will go on this way. Well, the reason is, is because this is the way it was drilled when it was in the uh, little vise there. And, and the uh, drill bit is tapered, smaller here than it is here. So that's the way it drilled the hole, because it only went in about that deep and that, that was it. So, anyway, show you something else here that's kind of interesting. Remember we were wondering about the uh, curing agent on the, the, the new curing agent, would it turn the uh, CA glue white? Well, apparently not. You can see here I've used it, rather than tying a knot, I guess I'm getting lazy, won't even tie knots. And uh, it didn't make that uh, crystallizing. Yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, that's my hinge. I'm only going about 250 RPM here and uh, that's just in case things start going awry and it all of a sudden grabs. The squealing from that bit turning inside that piece of mahogany got so bad that the auto level of the recording on my camera couldn't handle it. I was doing a little commentary at the same time. Well, that's out now. Okay, we'll try that. Now there is one more thing that will make it fit even easier, and that is that after I sand the brass tube, theoretically it makes it slightly smaller. Well, here we go. Let's see, is it going to go in a little easier or not? Well, it's somewhat easier. Let's see if I can't ream it out just a little bit more. Well, I think that's pretty well got it. And let's try it. And by the way, that's sort of polished on the inside. I don't think you can see it, but trust me, it is. Well, I wouldn't say that it's going to fall in and out of that hole, but I think it's going to be okay. I, I do know from experience though that when there's a real tight fit like that, the CA glue has a tendency to set up a lot faster. So I'm going to have less time to fool around. I am now back to the place where I was about 24 hours ago when I wanted to do this and the brass tube wouldn't fit. Now it fits. I had wanted to take and see how much room I had. Oh yeah, there's going to be a little bit of room there. You can see. I was afraid that it was going to be too small. 
but I'll even be able to take it down to the bushing. Put the other one in and you'll be able to see better. Okay, I'll be able to take it down to the bushing on the ends and have it just slightly rounded over. At least that's the plan. Now I have just wasted two hours rigging up this shaft here. Put a center hole in the end of it on this end so it would fit properly into my tailstock. Problem is, can't figure out how to fasten the sandpaper on here. I thought I'd be able to, you know, put a strip of scotch tape along here, along the leading edge, and then it would sort of roll over on top of itself and sort of keep itself nice and tight on here. And as it turned, I'd be able to put the blank on the end and just run it back and forth and enlarge it that way. Now I haven't entirely given up on this. I think it is a good idea. I just got to figure out how to get this to stay on that shaft without gluing it on. I don't want to glue it on. Anyway, another idea that's probably not going to work. Mm -hmm.